Hello and welcome back to Count Her In. We are super excited to have Melanie here with us today. She's the CEO of Melon Capital, and we're going to talk all things company entrepreneurship journey related with her today. So super excited to have you on. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me. I'm super, super excited to be discussing with you and hopefully share a lot about the goods, the bads and the uglies of being an entrepreneur and trying their own journey. Amazing. We're so excited to have you on. As always, we'd love to ask you both literally and figuratively on counter and what are you bringing to the table today? Um, so basically, um, just to give my introduction, I guess, uh, I am. my background is mostly in finance. I was an investor before, and uh, I've always experienced as an African of the diaspora a bit of frustration to not be able to invest back in my own country. I engaged in like some funds uh, that had a lot of potential capital to support entrepreneurs on the ground, but given the fact that we we're in Europe, we were always looking at larger transactions, so bigger companies. And my dream was really to see how we could support smaller entrepreneurs, younger entrepreneurs, people like me that maybe wanted to just give out in their communities, but didn't know how to get access to investors or like had no network to be able to do so. So with my co-founder Ian Minjiri, who was an entrepreneur himself in Kenya and really struggled to get funding, we decided to start Melon Capital uh, just before COVID, so good timing. Uh, and the idea here was to put like together a technology platform that could uh, drive financial inclusion for Africa and its diaspora by making uh, sustainable uh, startups investable and connect them to uh, capital. So now after like putting this together, we have more than 350 users on our platform. Uh, and what we provide is basically investment processing and investment structuring to just support them to get access to funding. And I'm happy to get into more details uh, later. Amazing. I love that. I love the background and the context it plays today. So how do you think you use your background and what you've been doing in your passion to bring some sort of energy or some sort of mission to the work you're doing every single day? Yeah, well, um, I have to say, like, because you see a problem every day in your daily work or in your daily lives, then it naturally pushes you to kind of try to solve it, right? So for me, it was also like discussing my frustrations with my fellow friends in the diaspora or in Africa in general. And they were always telling me, okay, you working for funds, you guys have a lot of money, but how can we benefit from it? Like, uh, how can we find you guys, etc." And I was always saying, yes, we do have money to invest, but there's this criteria, this criteria, this criteria. And it was very difficult for, for a lot of entrepreneurs I knew to kind of fit into those checklists basically so it really like gave me um the the kind of motivation for me and my co-founder to say that okay uh because no one has ideas about those checklists unless you have studied in a very huge university or if you had like already be confronted to those things so how can we help our fellow africans and africans from the diaspora to really understand what is expected from them and help them get to that level and then we can then structure the investment vehicles that can provide them the, the funding. So that was the, the whole motivation behind it, let's say. I love that. You can clearly see how like well thought out that motivation was, especially at the start. How were you able to convert that motivation into the first step? So the very beginning of your journey in building Melanin Capital what steps and what challenges did you face in building a company? That is a very interesting question indeed, because you see, before Melanie Capital, I tried many bad ideas. <laughs> I think that's also what really helped me. Like when I was at uni during my seven years of master's, like I did two masters. So the first one, I had like associations and, you know, like non-for-profit projects where I had to lead a team. And then I saw like the problems, for example, of nonprofit. And I was like, okay, I'm very not interested in doing a nonprofit at that stage because it's a lot of work and it's very difficult to live out of it. Then after uh, my second master's, actually, I had a passion for environmental and social challenges, especially in Africa. So I came up with 
a bit weird ideas, like have like um, a recycling bin. So I did like a lot of pitch decks about recycling and having like AI bin, but I was not an engineer myself. So it was very theoretical. So I realized that, okay, it's good to be passionate, but it's also important to have the skills and the background in what you're trying to do. So then when I was telling actually my my parents and my current co-founder about what I was facing uh, every day. They were just telling me, okay, instead of trying to do a recycling bin or doing, I don't know, like organic cosmetics, why don't you try to solve your problem and uh, solve something that you understand in and out. And that's that's where I, I thought, oh, okay, maybe the stars get aligned now. And then I, I started with like a basic pitch deck, like putting this on, on slides, showing it to a couple of people. A lot of people shoot it down. Some say it's a good idea. Then I started with a website. Then I reached out to a few people and just started selling what I wanted to do. So saying, I started with training. So I'm actually training entrepreneurs, students, anyone willing to uh, understand better how finance works in Africa. I'm happy to give a course. So I got a couple of clients like that. And then I thought, okay, now I want to do this tech platform. I reached out to a few developers, which is very important to get confronted to reality, you know, uh, instead of just saying, oh, one day I will do a platform, blah, blah, blah. Like just ask <laughs> how much does it cost to actually do those things? Because when you get hit with the with the invoice, <laughs> you understand that you have to, to, to give it a bit more thoughts before you actually develop a full tech uh, platform. I do not have a CTO, so um, we started really with Zoom and without any platform, doing our programs, doing the investment processing ourselves from A to Z, doing the investment structuring without any platform. And then this is when we started to have very good partnerships, very good clients, and we started to make a bit of revenues that we thought, okay, now it makes sense to invest in internal developers and pay people to actually do the tech. So that's how it's been done, but like really in phases. and. It helped that I was basically also working at the time. So then I was really doing this uh, aside and my co-founder was at home. So because COVID was hitting everyone, so he didn't have a job at that time. And so then we had more time to actually experiment and try different things uh, before it actually worked. Yeah, and I love that you touch on COVID as well. Like the finance world has been such, just such a crazy world in the last one year, going up and down, volatile, beyond belief. But at the end of the day, some fantastic things have actually happened in the stock market. I actually just saw right before we came on this call that this is not really related, but just an interesting, fun thing that I realized just happened. Elon Musk said he would donate $6 billion of his wealth to the UN if they could prove that they have a plan to solve like child poverty or climate, something like that. But they have to like prove a plan, which I thought was pretty interesting. This is amazing. So, yeah, I know. Pretty crazy. Pretty, pretty crazy. So yeah. Things are always going on. And I think people sometimes get lost in the numbers too, between like the idea of handling someone else's money's movements of money. Like it all sounds very, as you said, like theoretical, but when it comes to day-to-day -day sort of things for someone who's not in the finance world or maybe not grown up around like this finance, what sorts of actionable things could you say to do day-to-day, -day? what skills you need to develop and how you're actually able to make a difference in the world with the mission? I, I love that question because indeed, like it's due to movies, like when people think finance, they think the big shorts, they think like huge grass with the stock markets, making money fast and stuff like that. For me, finance is very different. Uh, first, like we also need to go back to the, like the origins of finance. It is used to basically finance the economy, to be able to propel the economy and provide the capital that a lot of enterprises and entrepreneurs need to be able to scale up their business. It's been lost uh, along the time because now it's becoming about just putting the right opportunity on the screen and be just like selling your stocks or your bonds at a premium. But um, 
for for me like i've never worked with the with those computers because i work on on private finance and not public finance so i don't finance on the stock markets i really it's a people business so i meet entrepreneurs i look at their stories i listen about what they they've been through i look at the pitch decks okay i look also at their financial statements you know like what are kind of revenues and and expenses they've had um, during the years. Uh, I meet the team, I meet the clients, I've meet, I meet all the stakeholders that work with them because at the end of the day, it's all about trust. I need to make sure that if I give them money, then this money is going to get back to me just because their character is, is also trustworthy because they have had um, a steady growth and revenues that can allow them to give back the money. So finance in a nutshell is just trusting that someone can can be able to give you back the money and you just have different analysis to prove that to your own let's say team uh, in, internally because the money that you are dealing with is not yours so you're not the only one to make the decision you have a committee so when you see an opportunity an entrepreneur that grows uh, well or like has a lot of impact and you want to support that entrepreneur then you look a little bit deeper into what he does or she does and um, what is the business all about and then it's all about assessing can we get the money back and that's pretty much it your product is capital so you just just have to find someone that has a demand on capital and then you put a price on that capital and that's it. So it's, it's actually a very basic thing, but what happened during the years is that we got the secondary market. So now it's not really about the entrepreneur per se, but it's about, okay, so Melanie has invested in uh, Apple and now she wants to resell Apple at that price. Do we believe that this is the right price or do we have, and it's not anymore about Apple. It's, it's really more about like just the, the stock fluctuations, which I have to say is, is less my forte, uh, but uh, yeah, you need, you need things for everyone. But I have to say like in Africa, specifically in the markets that where I operate, private finance is the biggest market because there's not a lot of, listed stock exchanges that are very we say liquid so that really mm -hmm. are active and trading on a daily basis so we mostly work on a private basis with entrepreneurs mm, that's really interesting like the demographic change and like where the the flow of capital is coming from something else that I really want to hear more from you is this idea of how you can be driven as like a social impact company and work in a space like finance. So how are you able to put that forward in everything that you do and make sure that you're being driven by that mission and vision? I have to say like it's quite, let's say, easy to be socially impact driven in Africa because a lot of opportunities and growing opportunities in Africa are really social impact, are driven by social impact. So for example, one of the biggest sector would be clean energy, right? Because we don't have um, a proper grid, uh, not everywhere at least, mm -hmm. but there's sun everywhere. So then microgrids and having solar panels that provide energy to a village, to a community, or to uh, a bigger city is something that is extremely attractive and extremely mm -hmm. profitable. Same, like to be able to do uh, proper clinics uh, for for women for them to 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 give birth in a better way or like to provide uh, schools that have um, like higher standards and stuff like that. Those are businesses that basically drive social impact, but at the same time um, are very attractive for investors. Um, us, of course, we are a bit extra because we want to become an impact investment bank. So really mm. to always have, um, we don't always provide return, we also provide impact. And that's that the one doesn't go without the other. Um, and what we want is to be able to also assess this impact to, pro to say to investors, when you give one euro to Melanin Capital, we give you back, uh, okay, maybe 15%, but also we give you back 50% more jobs and 10% uh, less CO2 emitted and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's really where we're trying to go. 
uh, social impact measurement is still not, let's say, completely uh, stabilized or harmonized across the globe. So there's still a lot of work and we lobby a lot on like um, new imp social impact framework to have a way to assess it in a way that is objective and that can really guide investors towards uh, how they can make uh, money and how can they make impact as well. So, yeah. I love that you're throwing around this world impact. I think it's so not only important right now, but I will say it is being used a lot. It feels that everyone who's in finance is using this. I want to make impact. I want to make impact. So I'd love for you to kind of break that down for me. What does it mean by impact? Tell me this, this jargon term that everyone's using. What does it mean by make impact? Yeah, good question again. <laughs> because I don't think that at the moment there is no clear definition. So, for example, when we say about impact investment, it's all about pursuing um, financial return and social and environmental returns as well. So it can be all ranging from job creations, women empowerment, youth empowerment, um, uh, literacy, providing education, providing access to uh, finance, providing access to water, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and environmental impact is a bit easier to assess. It can be all like a bit measured almost according to the CO2. So the CO2 you save or the CO2 um, you basically like, there is like when you decrease CO2, but there's also when you create like CO2 saviors. For example, if you plant trees, then you will sequestrate CO2. So then you're like CO2 positive, let's say. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, uh, I would say like people are not at least very clear on the definition of impact. And we're still having different definitions from different uh, ecosystems, which makes it very, very difficult for people like us to explain really well what we're doing and to, to be comparable basically to from one founder, one initiative to another. But uh, for us, at least, we define our social impact according to uh, the finance that we provide and what are our, like entrepreneurs, basically, that are financed on which sectors uh, they are. So we have two main um, topics, green entrepreneurship and social inclusion. For social inclusion, it's really trying to support youth and women to get access to um, economic opportunities. Mm -hmm. And green entrepreneurship is all about saving CO2. So that's that's uh, how we have defined it in, in a very um, big summary at Bellet Capital. I love that. And I think you're so right in terms of like, the definition of impact has so many definitions. Like it depends on, you know, your background as an individual, but also as a company, like what you're focused on and your experiences definitely back, like what impact looks like. Um, so moving forward for Melon Capital, what is something that you are really excited about that's making a lot of impact? So what we're very exciting at the moment is um, the program that we've launched with our anchor partner called Absa Bank, which is formerly Barclays Kenya. So with them, um, we decided to roll out uh, our technology in our um, investment bank, basically, through them a lot. So what we are looking at is supporting 300 uh, startups that empower women, either because they are women entrepreneurs themselves or because they employ women or they serve women through their services and products. And those 300 entrepreneurs will go towards a full pathway towards finance. So we'll provide them with fundraising trainings first, then um, with an advisory phase where we support them to put together all the documentation they need to get a loan from APSA. They will have a networking phase where they can just uh, build partnerships between each other. And finally, they pitch their project to us and APSA to get funding. So um, this we are really looking forward because um, this could showcase that our technology also can really support a large number of entrepreneurs at once and that we can really, thanks to technology, support um, entrepreneurs that uh, for the majority of them never had access to finance before. Uh, and uh, that uh, never also got those kind of trainings to be able to structure their business. So really looking forward to that. That's awesome. And I think as someone who's young, listening to this and potentially thinking of pitching their company or pitching their idea to investors one day, I think it's really cool to hear that there's experiences and there's opportunities like this. So let's say there's someone who's going in and is looking to pitch. What would be like your number one tip for them? My number one tip is even if you have a great idea, it doesn't mean it's a bankable idea. So just make sure that 
before you get towards an investor that you have tested your products on the ground. I have a lot of entrepreneurs that come to me and have just a concept on paper and that's, that is very difficult for this to work. You need to have at least a prototype and have tested the idea. Like even for us, for example, like when we started to, to pitch Melanin Capital to bigger enterprises, at least we have tested it on like 10 entrepreneurs uh, before we go towards the 300 or 1,000 entrepreneurs. But people need to understand that they, you know what you're doing, even if you're doing without your technology and you need money to develop the technology or you're doing it without um, all the team, that is fine. But we need to see that there's a market and that your potential clientele is actually interested in your products. And then once you've you've um, actually looked at that, you can start going towards investors because you need to you need to see and have feedback whether your project is already at that stage or if you need to still work on it, have more traction. But it's it's always good to share about your product and your idea and see like who what investors think about it. I love that. And as we begin to wrap up the podcast, uh, we'd love to ask our guests a couple of last questions for you. So we'll start off with five years from now, a young girl comes to the table. What do you want to leave for her today? Wow. Um, so five years from now, for, for me, like five years from now, I already wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I didn't know how to start where to start and how I could actually do it. So five, like what I would like to leave uh, today is actually a full um, process, infrastructure and tools for her to be able to understand how th- she can build her business, how she can get access to funding and just get started and experiment. Uh, so that she can also create the future she wants for herself because not everyone is willing or interested in working in a corporate. Some people just want to become an entrepreneur for themselves and try their own dreams. And it's most of the time hindered by a lot of economic opportunities or like, you know, economic capabilities at least, and even just knowledge and knowing how how she can actually get that into. So that's, I think, what I would like to, to leave for her today is uh, this um, bank, this one-stop shop where she can actually try out things and get all the advice and support she needs. Oh my goodness, the goals. Yes, yes, yes. I really do hope so. Um, Well, thank you so much for coming on. It was so lovely to hear a little about your journey. Again, amazing advice you have to offer and just the wonderful work you're doing in the space. If anyone wants to continue to follow your journey, to contact you or to just reach out to have some advice or hop on a call, where can they do that? Actually, they can either uh, directly come on the Melanin Capital uh, website, www.melanincapital.com. Or even just reach out to us on LinkedIn, um, on the Melanie Capital page or on my personal space, uh, Melanie Keita. I'm always happy to, to, to support and, um, and respond whenever you have questions or uh, if you have like a dream to share on the African continent. I love that. And with that, thank you so much for joining us on Count Her In. We're super excited to hopefully have you back in the future and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for having me. It was wonderful talking to you. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll keep, keep in touch and keep uh, sharing those kind of stories. It's always it always makes also it's a bit of a therapy even for entrepreneurs to just be talking about what they've going through and uh, yeah for me it was really great so thanks a lot thank you that wraps it up for today's podcast thank you so much for tuning in we hope you learned a lot about melanie and the emerging idea of social impact investing thank you so much to stephanie and win as our podcast producers too check out our past episodes and look out for our coming episodes inspiring female entrepreneurs on spotify apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening to this podcast now to stay updated and involved join the entrepreneurs network community on our instagram and linkedin and get in touch with us to share your very own entrepreneurial journey mm-hmm.